Guys, welcome to the channel. Thanks very much for joining me down here at Carter's Golf. I am at Royal North Devon Golf Club and today's video is all about course tutorial. I'm going to be talking you through in depth some really, really important shots that you need to know. So stay tuned for driver tee shots, wedges around the green, three wood off the tee and how to strike your wedges and your mid irons from the fairway. This video is going to be packed, packed I say, full of information. Enjoy. Comment below, let me know what you want to see in future videos. If you're new to the channel, do hit the subscribe button. There's going to be loads to come in the future. I'm excited for 2023. I may have said it before and I'll keep saying it. Let's crack on. Right guys, the first tutorial of today's video. I've got 30 yards, 25, 30 yards to the front of the green, 40 to the middle. And it's all about decision making. You've got to make your decision and you've got to own that decision. And the way, what I mean by that is I've got a little brook in front of me. I can't really play chip and run, so I'm going to have to hit the ball a little bit higher just to make sure I clear the brook. But I don't really need to go lob wedge. I don't need to go sand wedge. I could go gap wedge. I could even go pitching wedge because there's plenty of space on the other side to maybe run the ball up the bank. And what I mean by owning it is not getting too scared, too worried. Make your decision and then it's all about putting the correct and good technique on the ball again a lot of things with these golf tips it sounds so obvious to do but talking you through the actual tip so i'm going to go with the 50 degree i'm going to try and hit this ball just shy of the slope or maybe just onto the base of the slope first bounce and visualizing it going up to the top of the hill and then releasing out okay the wind though is into my face okay so that generally adds a little bit more height certainly adds a bit more backspin and generally prevents more roll out once the ball lands so the wind does play a huge role in shots even when it's only 30 to 40 yards in distance so what i'm going to do here and what's really important with this type of shot is you've got to make sure your angle of attack is down on the golf ball so the vertical angle of the club going down into the golf ball is one that creates a bit of height and creates a bit of backspin and gets you hitting the middle of the club face. If you come into the ball too shallow, so too low, then you're in danger of hitting the bottom one, two, maybe three grooves of the club face. And in doing so, you're trying to then scoop the ball up into the air and you generally, generally get a bad strike. Or if you don't get a bad strike, the consistency of good strikes is going to be a lot lower. So we've got to get in front, we've got to get the club hitting down on the golf ball. And to do that, we've got to allow the arms to really kind of release downwards, a downwards motion into the ground as the body rotates. What's really important here is that you don't try and drive the hands towards the target you're not trying to hold on to a lag angle position this is a this is a huge detriment to a lot of golfers and to be honest with you me included i had this lesson the exact lesson actually with pete cowan where as i come into the golf ball he says i drive the butt of the club to the target and that's not what you want to be doing i, I try and look at the butt of the club now it's at my belly button so i try and look at it as if it releases back down into that position so I'm releasing the club down into the ground as my body rotates and you see the butt of the club there back at my stomach, all right? So as I'm working the club face down into the ground, we're rotating through and that's the key here. I mean, that's, that's encouraging me to hit down on the ball and release. I'm not trying to drag the handle towards the target. I'm not trying to get my chest or my head in front of the golf ball to hit down either. For ironically, those two movements create more of a uh, more of a thin shot. So that's something obviously we definitely don't want to be doing. So let the club release down into the ground. I'm going to go ball position inside of my right foot here. So it's a bit more of a specialist style of shot because I want to hit a slightly lower trajectory. OK, now you could, in essence, go drop down to a pitching wedge. But for me personally, I prefer the feel of a, a Vivoki wedge rather than a a pitching wedge from a set. Right, ball position on the inside of my right heel. Got my hands on the inside of my left thigh. Don't allow the club to drag to the target. Don't get my body and the shoulders ahead of the golf ball. I 
And overall, that was played pretty well. The ball landed short of the green, ran up the slope, took the break from right to left. That's one thing I actually didn't mention. It's one thing I completely forgot. So again, when we get into these routines, is making sure that every single box is ticked before we hit the shot. As it goes up the slope, the ball will move right to left on this particular slope because of the side I'm approaching the green from. So that's a slight oversight from my point. So lesson learned, we're always gonna be learning. Next tutorial is gonna be on the next tee where I'm gonna be bashing a three wood down this dog leg right to left second hole with the wind off the right as well. But first of all, let's see if we can go and convert that for birdie. Oh, lucky. Easy par. Right, the next shot in today's tutorial is a three wood off the tee. This is probably, actually, normally I do hit three wood on this hole, but it's actually into wind today. So we're gonna be playing it a little bit on a slightly different angle than normal, because this is a, a sweeping dog leg to the right, a road up the right, but the wind's into and off the right. Just help, to be honest with you, it means I can be a bit more aggressive up the right hand side. Obviously, when you've got a road there, the psychology of that, Let's be fair, it's not great, is it? So with this type of shot, difference between ball position on the driver, which would be here, and a three wood, just a, just a smidge in back. I generally say a golf ball further back than the driver. This is a move where we're still trying to hit up on the ball, but nowhere near as much. So sometimes with a driver, I'm trying to hit up maybe three, four, five degrees. With this, I'm trying to hit up 0.5 to one, just very, very slight. What I try and do always as well is try and keep make sure I get my impact position nice and strong. I'm not trying to release it back here I'm not trying to launch this into the air and obviously today I'm definitely not trying to launch it into the air so one of the things I try and do with my, with my three wood is I really focus on swing path okay so I often try and make sure I don't get too stuck on the inside because if I do I might I'm gonna hit one of two shots one of three shots perfect one always we're always nice or I'm gonna hit the big high block to the right or the slingy hook to the left. So I often just try and make sure I'm keeping, I often rehearse this, of just allowing the arms just to work back down in front of my body, and then I'm rotating. So down, rotate. Now a lot of people say to me, what comes first? And let's be fair, at whatever speed you swing at, regardless of whether it's 50 miles an hour or 120 miles an hour, they both work simultaneously. They work pretty much together. As that transition comes down, what you've got to be able to do at this motion, with this motion, is basically be in control of two areas of your body and get them working in different angles. And that's the key to this. It's not what comes first, it's what you feel comes first to cr create that correct movement, all right? So making sure the arms work downwards as the body rotates, and then I just try and stabilize the face and what I mean by that, and there'll be a future videos on this. I think it becomes a, I think it's an area that does, it's a little bit overlooked, just the release patterns of a, of a golf club through impact. When I say hold, hold, control the face, I'm not trying to hold it off. I'm not keeping it open. I'm not keeping my hands over here. I'm getting to toe up, release, toe up. And what I, what for me, what I try and do is to make sure the club doesn't go that way. That's where my, that's my bad release pattern. I start to release it this way, that with an inside swing path gives me the big hook, okay? So that's why I'm working on those two points of down, and release it, release it correctly is probably a better way for me to describe it. Pick something out in front of the ball for my alignment with the club face, ball position a tiny bit further back than the, than the, than the driver. When I'm hitting into wind, it's key not to get ahead of the ball and try and hit it low. Just hit, hit your normal golf shot. Hitting into the wind, the wind's there, it's an obstruction you're going to have a longer distance in for your next shot than you would have had anyway, okay? So accept it or take extra club if you can. So three wood in front, release and rotate. Okay, come on. Oh yes. That, my friends, is a really nice three wood. We're gonna go up there because the very next tutorial, I love this golf course for this video, the very next tutorial is basically gonna be hitting a mid iron with a right to left side wind into a Lynx green. Woo, yeah. I've got to be honest, that was a lovely tee shot. I'm actually really happy with it because it's left me in a position where we can do tutorial number three. I've got 155 yards to the very front edge of the green. I've got 189 to the back. 
So straight away, you can paint a picture. That's a long green, that's a 35 yard green. And I've got 170 to the middle of the green as well. So first of all, what I always do, or at least always try and remember to do, wind. Especially on a golf course like this, it's wind, it's, it's a Lynx course, we're by the sea. Normally, I'll be honest with you, it is blowing insane winds, but today, I've got it on a favourable day. So they've got a, a pretty strong wind off the right, but nowhere near what it normally would be. So that means straight away, I've got to figure out how far right of the green am I going to aim. I hit the ball with a draw, particularly with my irons. So draw plus wind equals more right to left than usual. Now, when you add that spin together, once the ball lands, it might also hop left and roll left and release left. Okay, so I've got to put that into consideration. So I often think wind plus draw plus landing spin. Okay, now for the rest of it, I'm not massively in control. I don't know how much the wind's going to affect the ball. I don't really know how much I'm going to draw it. I don't really know how much it's going to spin and roll left. It's the best, it's the best guess, isn't it? Best guess wind. Right, the next bit is to decide what club to use. I've got three out here to kind of talk you through. So it's 160 to the front edge of the green and the flag is not at the front edge of the green. So the eight iron be gone. It's 190, 189, 190 to the very back of the green, which is a six iron for me. And to where the flag is, which I think is in the middle of the green, it's about 170. So seven irons perfect for the flag. So if this was a perfectly flat, calm day, that flag to me is just the perfect seven iron. But it's not flat, calm. Okay, we've got a six iron out. Six iron would take me to the back of the green if I absolutely pured it and the wind just stopped dead. So that's fine, isn't it? Because if I end up at the back of the green, I'm on the green, I've got a putt, all right? What I need to do with this though is just take a little bit off it because the wind is hurting a touch. It's a little bit into and off the right, but it's mainly right to left. So I'm going to take a little bit off it and I'm going to try and control the trajectory so it doesn't balloon up in the air because if it balloons up in the air too high, the wind will massively affect it. Now, by dropping down a club and hitting it a bit easier, I should therefore be able to control my swing better, which will be able to control the spin better, which should reduce the draw. Within this video, you're going to hear a lot of shoulda, woulda, couldas, because let's be fair, I ain't, I'm not a tall player, you're not a tall player, we're not fully in control of what we're doing, but we can only have a best guess at what we normally do. So I'm going to aim this golf ball right edge of the green, I'm going to try and reduce my draw spin as much as I possibly can. So this takes me back to what I did on the tee, where I'm trying to make sure I keep the club in front of my chest. Because if I get it stuck here, then we're in all sorts of right to left shape issues that we don't want. So right edge of the green, ball position is going to go just behind the centre of my stance. So I'm going to put it slightly back so I hit the ball a bit earlier in my downswing, which means the club face is more likely to be more open. Because if I hit the ball earlier in the downswing, the face is there. If I hit it later, the face has got more chance of releasing and rotating more so. So I want to hit the ball a bit earlier to not only hit down and hopefully give me that penetrating ball flight, but to hit the ball earlier so the face hasn't released as much. Body weight is going to be just less sat into my left hip, but my head and my spine angle is going to remain over the golf ball. So it's just a more of a lower body move in terms of that. Right, three quarter six iron. With a little push, hit it unbelievably well, folks. So what I did then, classic me, got a little bit stuck here, managed to stabilize the face, hit it earlier to, so the face didn't rotate on me as much, but I just popped it out to the right hand side. So I pushed it slightly right of where I aimed. And because I did all that work to stop the draw and to stop the movement, that bit worked, but my start line didn't. So I'm just to the right of the green. We're gonna have an in interesting chip. Which guess what? Brings me on to tutorial number four and i didn't plan that i was definitely planning on doing a chip but not quite so soon so we're going to get straight into that right guys a huge positive to that last shot i just played i'm perfectly pin high i played it i struck it amazing i think i hit that i obviously hit the right type of distance that i wanted to hit i just got stuck between two of the things one i was trying to avoid the big draw and two i was trying to control the face i controlled the face and avoided the big draw but I just blocked it a touch. Anyway, what would you play from here? This, you could, you could put this to be honest with you. This is a bit scatty, but once you get onto there, the fringes and the greens around here are incredible. What we're gonna do today, this is not a shot I play very often at all. 
a little eight iron chip and run. Now, personally, I hate the idea of a six and a seven iron chip and run because I feel like there's not enough loft and therefore you don't have enough back lift in your golf swing and it makes it very easy to mess it up on the way through. Eights and nines, I don't mind because I need a little bit more of a back lift, which means I need to get the club up a little bit higher to hit down on the ball. So I create a tiny bit of height, a little bit of spin, but I predominantly get the rollout that I'm looking for on a chip and run shot. On a six and a seven iron, I feel like golfers keep the, the club head too low to the ground. So the angle of attack is a little bit too shallow. It's too low to the ground all the way through the, the stroke and it's very easy to thin it. Now, when you thin it with a chip and run, it's generally not that bad anyway, because you've not hit the ball very hard for it to run off miles. So that's not the end of the world, but I think an eight iron chip and run, let the club head just get a little bit higher, get a bit soft in my wrist and just let the pendulum action work up and down, let the club head just drop into the ground. In terms of body rotation, there's a little bit in there, but not much. It's more about just making sure my whole body's moving together, but on very minute amounts. So just allowing the, the club here just to, just to release down. Okay, that's a key one there. It's not about trying to keep it still because then the club head will stay too low to the ground. You're just gonna allow the wrist just to, just to drop, just to drop there. Imagine you throw in a ball there. So if I'm coming in, I get to here, if I just release the ball, that's how I'm going to release the golf club, okay? So as you come down, you release the club. So I've got a little bit of angle of attack into the ball, a little bit of a release on the golf ball. Ball position's on my right foot again. My weight's tiniest bit on my left, but not much. Let it release. Up you go. Slight misread of that apron again, like the last hole. But in terms of distance, pretty good. Right, let's try and convert this for par before we go over to tutorial number five, which is the last one for this video. So I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Please do hit the like, please subscribe. You know the drill. It makes a massive difference to me, the channel and the family. Right, par. What? Have you ever seen a horseshoe like that before? That's gone 360, folks. 360 that went right robbed robbed right next hole guys tutorial number five is all about this bad boy right driver is out so one of the most important clubs in the golf maybe maybe the most important golf club in the bag if you're using it the most times on a golf course or certainly off the tee Obviously, we know putter gets used the most because it's 36, hopefully not too many more than that, times per round. This might only get used 14 times, but it does set a precedent for the other 60, 70 shots that you play in that round. Now then, ball position with this goes on the, in the inside of the left heel. Okay, so a little bit further forward than the last hole when we had the, the three wood out. Spine tilt away from the butt target should only be five degrees. We don't, I, I see too many golfers dropping down here and standing way behind it you're in all you're in a world of trouble there one of the most important things with driver here is maintaining a good posture in your spine tilt so you tilt forward and you tilt ever so slightly to the side five degrees and the best way to do that just slide the golf club from the middle east stance to the back of the golf ball and that'll be enough to tilt you four to five degrees okay one of the key things we've got to be able to do here is to rotate in unison with the hips as well if you tilt too much here the, road, the difference between angles on your hips, your legs, your spine, and your shoulders is so much so, you've got zero control of where you're actually going. So as you set the club in behind the ball, slide it in five degrees of spine tilt away from the target. And one of the key things here is making sure you get this rotation. Get your back to the target is a really nice way to feel, I think, personally. Body weight, try and keep it as central as possible. It will, with a wide stance and a tiny bit of spine tilt, it will naturally put you ever so slightly on your back foot. But I think it's important that you don't allow it to go too far because you don't want to lose your stability during your backswing. So as you take your setup, nice big rotation of the shoulders and the hips to get away from the target and away from the ball. And then on the way down here, my head is already behind the golf ball. And that's where I want it to stay. I want to come back, I want to allow my arms to kind of work the club 
back downwards. Like we mentioned before with the three wood, being in control of two parts of your body. The upper body works for your swing path. The lower body works as well for your swing path, but also your power. So allowing your arms to start to work back down as you're releasing your lower body. Now keeping your head back behind the golf ball and then the release pattern is very, very important. So if you could go back into my library, check out Gem Golf, find that in my library, because this is a fantastic training aid for releasing the golf club into the correct position. Without even buying the training, just watch the video, you'll learn a lot more about the release patterns. And there's gonna be a lot more to come on this because I'm seeing it a lot within my, my comment section is that people are really struggling with release patterns. So definitely more to come on that subject. So massively important here that we get the correct spine tiller set up, get the best, get the best rotation possible, but very similar to the three, where we're in control of the transition, we're in control of the rotation, we're in control of the release, and that should, should give you a decent oh, t-shirt yes don't mind that at all guys thanks very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope there's been plenty of good information in there and if you're new to the channel like i said before please do hit that subscribe button see you very soon for more pretty awesome hopefully <laughs> content